Well, this time I've managed to buy myself an HMV Stereo Master 2400. The 2400 is a stereo record player only. It isn't a radiogram. It has on the mode switch the word radio, but well, that's for an external input. There's a three and a half mil jack socket inside there, which is mono to put an external radio in, which has that kind of connector and HMV did a number of them at the time and then there's also a stereo 5 pin in socket for a tape recorder or anything else like your CD player or your MP3 player or whatever. Now this has come in quite a state as you can see. It's been varnished and Mr Chippy has actually had his fingernail on that and been pulling bits off. We're going to refinish this cabinet as you're probably aware the business here is in fact involved in church pipe organ restoration and so we will kind of shove it through workshops and um, and do it properly so we're going to sand that down very carefully when we've taken the works out and the polish which we'll apply will be not French polish because that's yellowish but a shellac clear polish it isn't supposed to be some kind of man-made thing um, and you can see this is reacted with what was on underneath so I'm sure you'll see the difference when we get to that stage in the overhaul so what we're going to do today is we're going to overhaul the the turntable on this this model has the Garrard 3000 turntable unfortunately it's only come with the short center spindle and it hasn't come with the auto spindle so for the purposes of demonstration we'll borrow a long spindle off another uh, one of these products but uh, unless we can find one kicking around somewhere which I highly doubt I'm sure that people who have center spindles want an arm and a leg for them so what I'm going to do is just go through the procedure to lubricate the turntable and that starts by taking off there's a decorated bit there we're going to just pop that off and that will enable us to get to the circlip underneath these are a very special type of circlip, which is best not to try and lose because it, I think it holds the spindle in as well, if I remember rightly. So hopefully the platter will lift off. Sometimes you have to apply heat to do that. It's a metal platter. And you're greeted with what's standard for Garrard and BSR mechanisms, which are idler driven. There's the idler. And there's the motor. It's a synchronous motor, so it's in, we're in the UK, so we're on 50 hertz mains, so it's locked to that frequency. And then we've got the cycle gear that usually jams up. But uh, this was shown working by the vendor. I bought it off eBay for less than 10 pounds, and he'd rescued it from a tip. Um, so well done, Mr. eBay vendor. I'm very pleased that he did. I won't be able to do this demonstration. It's come without legs could make a joke about it being legless and we're going to take off that cycle gear which can sometimes be difficult to get off but in this case it isn't and we want to remove all this nasty grease which I'm going to do with isopropyl alcohol so we'll just pause the video whilst I do that it's a bit windy out here today so having removed the grease what I'm going to now do is this activates the auto stop at the end of the record so that's the, that trips the mechanism. And as often as not, they're as tight as anything. This one isn't. I mean, it may have been overhauled at, at some time since it was made in 1969. But I'm still going to take that apart. So I'm going to pop that circlip off there. And I might even be able to do that with my finger, which I have. Just take that out of there. The circlip underneath for the other section. Pop that off there. And that section just comes out there. And again, I'm just going to clean it up with the isopropyl alcohol. So I've now put that back together. And as you can see, that's nice and loose. Put some lubrication. Just used ordinary household oil. 
which I do, this one's in an aerosol. And the same as applies to this track, I'm not going to put grease on it, but it's a bit of ice, ordinary ice, hold oil on it, just run that round. Some on the spindle there, some on that one there. And hopefully that will fit back together. Which it has. So we'll pop the circlet back on there. And that's how it should be. So now we'll move forwards onto the idler. So I'm just going to move the camera position slightly. Right, so we'll pop the circle off the idler, which looks in nice condition. There's the washer as well, plastic washer. Should be a plastic washer or fiber washer underneath which there is just pop that off so i can clean properly that's what i'm going to do right now i'm going to clean the motor with its stepped spindle which is the different speeds I'm going to clean the idler's pin there. It's not too dirty this one, it's one of the, certainly one of the better ones I've seen. And then the idler, which is going to run that round with the isopropyl alcohol. And we could apply a fraction of lubrication to that centre spindle. Try not to get it on the rubber wheel like I just did. Pop that back on. Yep, that's going. Oh, I never put the washer on underneath, did I? shouting at your screen there put the washer back on put the circlet back on there Just make sure there's no lubrication on that idle wheel There we are, that's that bit done. Whilst we had the, I'm gonna to have to go back now, Mr. Stage. Whilst we had this off, we should have taken out that, cleaned the grease off it. You can see the ball race underneath there. Again, we're just going to use the light oil, put that back on. Pop out the manual spindle, uh, I think I'll be doing that off camera. The other thing we're going to do is just clean round the inside of the platter with the isopropyl alcohol just to make sure there's no grease or muck on there. So I managed to get the centre spindle out all right. And we'll just pop some oil down there because when we put when we actually find an auto spindle, uh, that does need some lubrication for the um, works which is down there. Let's pop that back in. So now it's just a matter of putting the platter back on.
and a special circlip. So there we are, that's the turntable platter back on and the little bit of trim. Now before we power it up, we're going to tip the thing on its side and we're going to take out the power wires from the internal works for the turntable so we can run it on a little test lead we've got because I don't want to run this product's electronics until we've overhauled the electronics. As you all know there can be an avalanche effect if things are not right so we want to change all the capacitors in the all the electrolytic capacitors in the amplifier before powering it up so to power up the turntable separately we're going to disconnect the power from it and just put it to a little quick test lead so i'll put it on its side and you can have a look at that okay so we've got the bottom off as you can see now and we've got it on one side on the bench and as you can see this the model is the 2400 pull that to one side we've just shoved that into a, a connector block to a plug with a one amp fuse in just kind of thing we do the sockets here are all earth leakage circuit protected anyway we'll be taking the electronics out and that'll be a separate video uh, on the overhauling of that but it, one of the reasons we don't power these up when we've just bought them, we don't know the story behind them, is these electrolytics, there's some, I don't know if they're in camera, but there's some orange ones there, and if there's any of those dreadful black ones, they need to go as well. So there aren't that many, it's probably about six or seven. It's not that big a deal, you know, change out of seven pounds. So that's what we're going to do, because we don't want to wreck the transistors. If you've got a short circuit with a capacitor, you can end up, blowing up transistors. I remember many years ago at college and I'm 54 so we're going back a few years and this was <laughs> this recording is done in 2017 uh, so about 1979 at uh, Technical College in the sunny suburbs of uh, Rotherham um, the instructor he says remember a, f uh, a, f a transistor is a very fast fuse on three legs and they're very wise words. Oh no so we'll just uh, show you down here there's a little chart which tells you where the transistors are, which is quite handy. And I was saying about the centre spindle being missing. What do you think we found inside the mechanism? The long centre spindle. That is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really very, very pleased about that. So we're going to put it back on its bottom and then we'll run up the turntable. Right, so we'll take the manual spindle out, put it in its little place where it lives and pop in the hopefully Now we're just going to make sure it auto drops with the centre spindle fitted and we'll see whether the stylus goes anywhere near the correct part of the edge of the record. If it doesn't, the adjuster for that is there. So we've set it to 33. It automatically detects the size of the record because of a little thing there. So let's see what happens. I wonder how many years is it before, it, when it last uh, ran on auto. Now it's gone into the record too far and it's skipping right across because no doubt the stylus is no good. We, that's why we have these worthless records. And just that. I can't remember which way it is without looking at the service manual. So that's worse, it needs to go the opposite way. Yep, 
you can hear any grinding noises in the background, we've got Mr Chippy here on the next outside bench. So that's hopefully set up somewhere near. And that's now correctly put down on the lead into the record. Of course you can't hear the record because the amplifier isn't running, as I say, we're just running the turntable motor direct from the mains. On another video, when we finally put all this back together, when we've done the case, when we've done the electronics, that's a nice warp record, isn't it? We'll be setting up the stylus pressure, which we want to be under four grams, hopefully around about two and a half. That's adjusted. There's a little thumb wheel at the back of the tone arm to do that. Uh, we'll also be checking the speed, although it's main synchronous. And we'll also be checking the state of the stylus, because I think we'll be changing that anyway uh, from what we've just seen there. Uh, it just skips straight across the record, but it was a changeover stylus. It was LP, LP, so I just turned it over and it's, I can hear it uh, playing. You probably can uh, as well. So that's all I can tell you at this stage about the HMV Stereo Master 2400, which is not a radiogram. It is solely a record player. Four speakers, woofers are at the side, tweeters are at the front. And this model, I've never had any problems with the loudspeakers. Uh, you may have seen my video on the 2419 which was the last model they did in 1973 and every time you've got to change the woofers on them but on these not had any problems. So the next video will be in the workshop and it will be stripping down the amplifier and going through the electrolytic capacitors. Thanks for watching.